everyone لو جماعه رحله جديده من البرنامج بتاعنا معاكم مايك وشاد عايزين نعرف اكتر عن تشارلز ماكنتوش ف هنحاول نسال الناس كده ماشيين في الشارع اهلا وسهلا اسمي ايه اسمي ايه لا دي واضح انها ضايعه تعرفي ايه عن تشارلز ماكنتوش مين تشارلز تشارلز ماكنتوش از ذا طب اكني بقى على جنب مين حضرتك اتعرف حضرتك نعم لا اسمها نعم؟ طيب طب يعني شو اسمه مين ما كنتوش؟ ذا ذا ارتيك باين باين اه هو فعلا ارتيك طب هو انا ما قريتش قوي عنه خالص يعني ما قريتش قوي 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 يعني يعني بس اللي اعرفه ان هو عمل ميكس كده ما بين الارت اند اركتكتشر اه ارت اند اركتكتشر طيب دي حاجة حلوة جدا واخيرا لقينا حد بيفهم يا جماعة وهنشوف اكتر عن شارلز ما كنتوش في الفيديو اللي جاي انتظرونا If you go to Barcelona, then you'll see the work of Antonio Gaudi. If you go to Chicago, you'll see the work of Frank Lloyd Wright. They identified their cities. The city of Glasgow was identified by the brilliant architect Charles René Mackintosh. Charles René Mackintosh, a modern man, the head of his time. In the 1900s, his name was all over the world. For a long, long period, no one had any interest in Mackintosh. Within the end of 20th century, he was amazingly famous again. Macintosh combined different architectural styles. He played games with the buildings. When he was 28 years old, he built what was unquestionably his greatest building. The government insisted that the building would be plain simple. There is no doubt that when Macintosh built the Glasgow School, it was such a shock to the people of Glasgow. The front of the building was maybe marginally accepted, but the back, which most people can see and was on the top of the hill, was a total shock. The main entrance and the visual focal point are on the north side. Both, the main entrance and the building as a whole, are not a perfect symmetry. The northern elevation has some artistic details that show in. Wrought iron on the studio windows. An iron road arch supports a lantern across the main entrance. A rose bush bordered by two women whose dresses flow down to form the surrounding molding. The western elevation is mostly notable for its three oriel windows, acting as a light and decorative source for the library. Macintosh used the Gothic windows in his own scale and design. When I first walked into Glasgow School of Arts, I was overwhelmed, totally. It was one of the most exciting moments in my life. Every time I entered the school, I still have the same feeling. Macintosh designed everything in the school to serve the artists, and it still does. The effect of entering the library is like entering a forest, a timeless place. In the center, soft moonlights, and beyond that, twinkling stars. Nature is everywhere. Large vertical beams are offset with notched balustrades and gently curved arches. Even the lighting pendants match the Art Nouveau furniture. I suppose, for me, the thing that I like about Macintosh interior is that serenity, calmness, sense of light, elegant Japanese interior makes it a restful place to be. He cares about every tiny detail. Seed, root, leaf, bud, bloom. Charles René Macintosh was born in 1868 in Glasgow. He was born dyslectic and walked with a limp. 
At the age of 16, Macintosh was articled to the firm of Glasgow Architects. In the evenings, he attended classes in the Glasgow School of Arts. Macintosh lived a double life. In the morning, he went to the firm as a professional architect with a very neat appearance. In the evening, he attended the School of Art, dressed in a bow tie and casual clothes. When Francis knew Paris, came from London to take over the position of the headmaster of the arts school. He wanted to deliver the experience he gained from his life in London and his relation with the most popular artists and architects. He found a group of four men and women who accepted and liked his ideas and called themselves the Four or the Spook School. There are a group of four women called themselves the Immortals. Francis MacDonald and her older sister Margaret were in the group. Both of them had their own design workshop. Bart seen Imagine Bart in 1896. He painted it for Margaret before they got married. It's a painting of a plant or a tree with a structure of a woman. You have this movement from root stem, flower, up to the spiritual zone, where ideas and life seems. The top half of the painting is revealed, and the bottom half is hidden. The art is not about seeing only, but also about the man's imagination of the viewer. Artistic architecture buildings provide enlightenment and celebration of joy and nature. Macintosh had the talent and Margaret had genius. His wife encouraged him to keep his head not to follow in Glasgow's architect's footsteps. Macintosh's work was always a total work of art. For example, when Blackie asked him to design a family home, Macintosh made him a dwelling house. It's not an Italian villa, or a Swiss chalet, or an English mansion. He designed every single detail, even the clock. He didn't have respect for completion dates, or budgets, or anything. He was stubborn, argumentative, and childish sometimes. He was too individual, too challenging. But in the end, Macintosh was, and still is, the head of his time.